Hello everyone, today I want to show you another cool feature of Mach 4. This one has been around for a little while, but I think it deserves more attention. I'm talking about the PMC. Like all PLCs, it uses ladder logic. Now there are some slight differences in our version, which are highlighted in the help documents found inside the PMC editor. These are going to be a great resource for you, so remember that. Now what does the PMC do? Well, it can be used to monitor and control virtual and physical inputs and outputs by stringing together basic functions. Not only can you use the PMC to automate functions with delays and sequences of events, but you can also use pendants, control panels, even an Xbox controller with it. Some other uses for the PMC are creating a pulsing loop system that releases a shot of lubricant at set time intervals when your spindle is running, setting up a tool changer sequence, using program interlocks, and my personal favorite, tying together multiple input and output devices in one single system. The PMC scripts operate separately from any G-code file or macros you may be using. They also require no Lua knowledge, though an understanding of ladder logic will be helpful. I'm going to go over two examples in this video with you to help you get started. First, I want to show you a fairly basic example of how you can use the PMC to control an input in the core. I'm not even hooking up to a machine for this one, so everything will be done in the core of Mach 4. For the purposes of this video, we created a separate profile and a screen that will allow us to test the functionality of our scripts once we're finished. That's not covered in this video, and it's entirely optional to anyone who's trying to follow along. To get to the PMC editor, go to Configure and choose PMC. This will always open a new blank file. We want to create a script here that turns on the flood when two conditions are met. To start, we're going to insert the instruction for our final outcome, which is flood on. In this example, we aren't dealing with any physical devices, so I choose insert core action. Our core action is inserted into the end of the rung and we can double click to assign the action. We're given a nice hefty drop down list of core actions and the one we're looking for is flood on. Next, we need to insert our conditions or contacts. Double click to edit and you'll see we have a few more options to choose from in this window. On the left, you choose the source of the condition. In this case, a core output. The only option for device is signal since this is a core action. The object is going to be our first condition, which is G-code running. We only want our coolant to be turned on by the script when a G-code file or MDI command is being executed. Let's keep it simple and call this instruction G-code. We're going to use the same process to set up the second condition, which is that the spindle is on. We want the flood to turn on when there's G-code running and the spindle is on. Again, we're selecting a core output, choosing signal as our device, and locating the spindle on function in our object drop-down list. Lastly, we're going to give our instruction a name, spin. Now, we're adding an instruction that turns the flood off when our conditions are no longer met. Just like before, we're going to insert a core action, but choose flood off from our drop-down list instead. By default, the PMC is constantly scanning the state of your conditions every 50 milliseconds. Since our script is based on circumstances changing when there is a G-code running and a spindle turns on, we need to add two more instructions. The first is a one-shot rising command. This is used when a condition is normally false, but the most recent scan shows that it is now true. In this example, the G-code isn't always running and the spindle isn't always on. When the PMC does its scan and those values return true, a pulse is generated on the rising side to trigger the output. On the flip side, if the previous scan returned true values but is currently returning false ones, we need a one-shot falling to trigger a pulse on the falling side and turn off the output. This is a very simple function that can be further customized with additional options like timers. Now let's save our little script. You want to give it a name and make sure it's saved in the PMC folder in your Mach 4 directory. In the PMC editor, you have the option to play around in simulation mode, which is found in a simulate dropdown. You can see that neither of our conditions are in an active state. For this example, it's easy enough to test in Mach 4 itself, so I want to output my code. Go to Settings, Code Generator, and select Lua. Then we can generate a Lua version of the script we just created. No Lua knowledge necessary. So how do we implement our PMC script? We use a screen editor. If you haven't checked out the screen editor, you definitely should, but that's another video. In the screen editor, click on the top line of the screen edit tree and look at your properties tab. Way at the bottom, you'll see PMC objects. Click the three dots on the right to open up the PMC objects list. This is where you'll choose which PMC scripts you want active and running. 
You can have multiple, so just check off the ones you want and leave any others unchecked. Now we can leave the screen editor and save our screen. If you're going to play with your screen, I always recommend creating a copy of the default screens and leaving the originals untouched. Let's see if our PMC does what it's supposed to. I'm going to enable Mach 4 and start my spindle. Remember, our conditions are that the spindle must be on and there must be G-code or MDI running. The three LEDs on the right show if the G-code is running, if the spindle is on, and lastly, if our flood is on. The spindle LED is working. G-code LED is working. Notice that the flood LED hasn't turned on yet. If we turn on our spindle and run G-code, we see our flood on LED light up. This example used two core actions as conditions for another core action. Now let's move this onto a real machine. If you don't recognize this screen, it's Mach 4 Industrial. I've already copied over the PMC file we just created into this profile's PMC folder in the Mach 4 directory. Now I just need to tweak a few things since we're branching out from core to a real machine. To do that, go to File, Open, and choose the relevant file. I don't need to save this blank file, so that's a no. This should look familiar. We've got our two conditions, our one-shot rising, one-shot falling, and our flood on and off outcomes. Double-click an instruction to edit and make your changes. We're going to change the source from code output to device output since we're working with an actual machine and motion controller. We select the device from the drop-down below, Smart Bob, and then assign the appropriate object. In this case, it's output 2. We also need to edit the instruction that checks if our spindle is running. Same process. Change the source to device output, choose our device, and choose the relevant output. That's all we need to change to make this PMC script work on our machine. To finalize, let's go to Generate, and our PMC will be saved in Lua. To enable our little script, we go to the screen editor, select the screen, and choose our script from the PMC objects list. This is a step you'll have to take every time you develop a new PMC object. In case watching LEDs wasn't enough excitement for you, let's run this test in a more realistic setting. When we start this G-code file, the spindle will start and both of our conditions will be met. The flood should turn on. If you can't see that on the machine itself, this LED also indicates when the flood is on. Now if we turn off the spindle, the flood stops, just like it's supposed to. Both in a simulation and on a real machine, we were able to successfully control an output based on two separate conditions, and we didn't need to know any Lua scripting to get it done. Now that you've seen the PMC editor in action, have you thought of any ways a PMC script could improve your setup? Share your ideas in the comments below and at our support forum. Be creative, have fun, and as always, happy CNCing!